everybody, this is James. Now I know some of the images that we just saw that we may not identify with our culture, but nonetheless, they are images that we may be familiar with. But let me show you some images now that I know that you're familiar with. The relationship killer that I want to talk to you about today, friends, is adultery. Now, I know when you just saw those images, you might not have thought about adultery. A, a better term that you might have thought about would be idolatry. Now, when we think about idolatry and those images that we just saw, and what idolatry is, is it's things like texting or shopping or, or um, watching movies or being lazy and just wanting to sleep or watching sports and putting whatever it is we put that thing before God or above God. If we go to the book of Exodus, we can see an example right away of what idolatry is. We see the children of Israel, they've come out of Egypt and Moses has gone up the mountain and here they are, they're left alone without their leader, without their mediator to talk to God. They're left all alone right there and what is it that happens? They begin to feel distant from God. They begin to feel like they don't have something tangible to help them to relate to God, to keep them close to Him. So they, ret they, they return to what they know, what they're comfortable with. They go, oh, I know what we can do. Let's go off and build a golden calf because we used to worship Him back in Egypt. So they melt down the, the gold and the, the gifts that God had blessed them with when He brought them out. That would be a slap in the face, wouldn't it? To take the very things that God gave you and use them as an idol, as a, as a thing to put a, a wedge between your relationship with you and God, or to even put it above Him. So they make this golden calf, and they begin to worship it. They, they, they get really uh, exuberant about it. They're dancing around it. They're worshiping and giving it 110% uh, of their attention, their affection, and their time and energy. And here comes Moses. He comes down the mountain. And he sees what's going on down there before them. And, and you can just imagine the outrage and the passion that, that he must have felt towards them because he understood the relationship that he had with God, how intimate it was, how important it was, how vital it is to, to his life and to their lives. So he comes down and he breaks up the party. You know, he says, what are you doing? Why would you want to go backwards? to the things that you did before. God delivered you and He set you free from those. He, he's given you something better. He wants to take you to the promised land. Don't you, friend, want to continue to go forward with God and go into to your destiny, into the promised land that He has for you? Let's not let the things of the world put a wedge and put a, 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 a distance between us and God and our relationship with Him. Idolatry can come in any way, just as the images that we've seen today they can come so subtly hey the devil is good at, at creating things and, and giving you things to to, co to to commit adultery towards God it's not just a relationship with with a spouse think about all the ways that we think of when somebody commits adultery with a spouse or even with a friend those can be the very same things that we do to God but we don't relate them that way but that's exactly his idea to get you to pull away from God and to try to destroy the relationship you have with Him. That's why Jesus came, built a bridge for us on that cross. We can come to God. He's there with open arms telling us and showing us, hey, I'm here with you. It says in His words, not have any gods before Him. He's there for us. He's omnipresent in every way, shape, or form. If you think about it in uh, the story of Hosea, God is, 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 is uh, using his very life to show him how the nation is being uh, adulterous towards him. They're going after other gods. They're giving all their time and effort to everything else around them, but yet he still loves them. He gives them a chance every time. He never leaves them nor forsakes them, and he'll never leave you nor forsake you, friend. So don't let those things continue to put a wedge between you and him. Today is your day to make a stand, to clear those things out, because He's got hope. He gives you hope in every situation to have an awesome relationship with Him. Pick up that Word of God today, friends. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You can turn anywhere in that scripture and find hope, 
find a, a right relationship with Him, find joy, find strength, encouragement, not only for yourselves, but for those around you in this world. Let your light shine for Him and for the kingdom, because He's got a plan for you. No more idolatry, no more adultery. This is you and Him. This is your time. Amen.